thinkers like Marshall McLuhan alert us to the transformative effects of communication technology. Technology is never neutral. Instead, it changes us as individuals and as societies, both physically and temperamentally. In short, it changes our understanding of ourselves and who we are. And so the question is, how and in what ways does the communications technology of today change us, our biology and our self-understanding? To find out, we had to travel to Oxford University to meet with Professor Luciano Floridi. We are on our way to meet Luciano Floridi at Oxford University. It's a touch too early for my taste, but I'm fired up and excited because we are meeting a really interesting thinker who has researched moments in history that changed our self-understanding. Pivotal moments or turning points where the way that we looked at ourselves changed, changed fundamentally. In 2014, Luciano Floridi published The Fourth Revolution, a groundbreaking book in which he investigates how today's infosphere is reshaping human reality. How it radically changes not only how we deal with the world and make sense of it, but also how we look at ourselves and understand our own nature, existence and responsibilities. If we look at the history of humanity on this planet, we always felt that we were so important, so much at the center of everything. There have been four moments in our history where that centrality has been hugely challenged. Now, a long, long time ago, we thought we were at the center of the universe, literally at the, at the center of, the, of all stars, all planets, all galaxies. And then Copernicus came and said, sorry, but you're not at the center of anything. You are on a small little planet going around the sun and not even at the center of the galaxy. In fact, there's a big world out there and uh, you're not that important. So we kind of retrench in uh, a different kind of centrality, centrality in the animal kingdom. Uh, the thought implicit in our culture was, well, maybe we are on this small planet in the middle of nowhere, but when it comes to life on Earth, we are the not best product of anything. And then Darwin came and says, well, I've got bad news for you, uh, my dear. Uh, you're not at the center of the animal kingdom either. Meanwhile, there was a sort of a third centrality that we also took for granted, and that was uh, the centrality in our mental life in the sort of space of reason. Uh, if you read Descartes or Pascal, uh, the very idea that uh, we can uh, think, we are conscious, we are sort of in control of our own ideas. And of course, Freud came and says, you're not at the center of your mental life either. So these were the first three revolutions that put us outside of any centrality in the universe, in the animal kingdom, in the mental life. Quietly, meanwhile, we had a fourth option. People will not remember, but we used to say that we were the best at playing chess, that we were the only one who could play Go, the only one who could fly the airplane, park the car, buy the fridge online, find friends that you know, would seem like, so decide about the holiday and so on. And then of course, you know, Turing, Alan Turing came and said, well, not quite, but almost, that we're not at the center of the infosphere either. This space of information where you can act in a smart way, when you can process information quickly enough to buy the right stock online. Not a human being. Uh, so we're not at the center of that infosphere either. We share it with uh, artifacts, with semi-intelligent uh, sort of artifacts, with other animals, of course, with smart cities, smartphones and so on. So we better rethink all this centrality once again. So are you basically saying that um we can no longer think of ourselves outside the infosphere. We are no longer standalone things. Our position within the infosphere, within the space of information, is a non-turning point. We, uh, in the same way in which we assume the wheel, the engine, a motorway, the ability of wearing glasses, you name it, now, we are assuming the fact that we are surrounded by information, that uh, it's uh, strange, unusual, upsetting if you are not connected, uh, that your car will be sort of guided by a GPS and so on. So this presence and uh, sort of citizenship within the infosphere uh, is irreversible. What is not 
irreversible is how we shape this infosphere, what we make of it. It's like saying, well, we landed on a new planet and that is a one-off. It happens only once in the you know, history of humanity. What we do with this landing, what we do with the planet, what kind of life we want to have on this new planet called infosphere, that is entirely up to the current generation. You sort of reboot human history only once from the analog to the digital. It's happening now. We don't do it properly, it's up to us uh, to pay for the consequences. Floridi suggests that information and communication technologies are bringing about a fourth revolution that is radically changing our lives and our self-understanding. This forces us to reassess our fundamental nature and role in the universe. We are not at the center of the universe. That's what the Copernican revolution showed us. We are not naturally distinct and different from the rest of the animal world. The Darwinian revolution dispelled that. We are far from being entirely transparent to ourselves. That's what the Freudian revolution was all about. And finally, we are not disconnected agents. Instead, we are becoming informational organisms who share with other kinds of agents a global environment ultimately made of information the infosphere. It is this fourth revolution that is very much in line with Marshall McLuhan's core dictum that the medium is the message. It is today's information and communication technologies that are changing us as human beings and as societies.